Are you the owner of a new diesel or are trying to decide if your new truck will be gas or diesel? Stick around, you're gonna wanna see this. The real deal. Welcome to Insane Diesel. So today we're going to talk about the great question, should I delete my diesel engine? Diesel trucks are very useful in becoming more popular, usually because they get better gas mileage than a gas engine, have greater towing power, and the engines are far more durable. But whether you are new to diesels or simply getting a newer model, you're going to have to deal with the new emissions controls. This may leave you with questions like, what the heck is diesel exhaust fluid? And what is regen? And likely the really great question on your mind is probably, should I get delete? Or how do I get them deleted? Well, today is your lucky day because I'm gonna walk you through that right now. Hi, I'm Ernest. Welcome to The Real Deal at Insane Diesel. <laughs> so, first, what is a delete? You may have heard the term, but aren't really sure what it means, what the reasons are, what you should or shouldn't, and you know, what the options are. So let's dive in. In general, a delete means the process of removing or blocking off one or more of the government mandated emissions control devices and changing the related engine computer programming. The remove systems include uh, EGR, DPF, and the SCR. We'll discuss what those systems are in a minute and why they are removed. In any case, it can be difficult and should be done by someone with experience and the ability to reprogram the engine computer. First, here are the more popular reasons for doing a delete. They include 30 to 50% increase in gas mileage. That's huge. Uh, 5 to 10% increase in power. And 50 to 100% increase in engine life. Another big deal. Not too shabby. The reasons not to do delete? Expensive and difficult. They can cost thousands of dollars to do. It's illegal for public roads and can result in high penalties like mm, a $10,000 federal fine and can void dealer warranties, can't pass emissions in certain counties and states like California, preventing renewal and registration. Now, the reality is that enforcement is rare, so few are penalized. Corporations are more tightly governed, but most elites legal for off-road use are still driven daily on the road. It may be difficult for, uh, to find a mechanic or a garage willing to do the delete. Generally, they will sell you a kit plus labor, and the engine computer also needs to be reprogrammed to exclude the emission systems and to program the engine for optimum performance instead of being optimized for emissions. What emissions, you may ask? There are several emissions that the government became concerned with on diesels in particular, including the nitric oxides uh, expressed with NOx, uh, diesel particulate matter, which is your black smoke or soot that comes out the engine, and carbon monoxide. So now let's see what each emission system does. Nitric oxides are toxic gases and are believed to promote smog, acid rain, and complications for the human respiratory system. In 2003, diesel manufacturers were required to implement nitric oxide emissions controls and did so via an EGR, or exhaust gas recirculation system. Nitric oxides are produced in high numbers because it is the byproduct of a healthy, efficient, hot engine combustion system. So the, the hotter the combustion, the more nitric oxides are produced. The purpose of the EGR is to route some of those the ex engine exhaust gases back through EGR tubing to the EGR valve, which then determines when and how much exhaust gases to reintroduce into the cylinder. Uh, and that, those exhaust gases can replace up to 50% of the fuel air mixture in a healthy engine with waste gases, making a cooler combustion in the engine. Cooler combustion, uh, less nitric oxides. Unfortunately, a cooler combustion means less efficient combustion, which means more soot, means less power, and reduced gas mileage. But that isn't all. Soot can also coat parts of the cylinder um, and increase the amount of abrasive soot that blows by and ends up in the oil. While the EGR reduces nitric oxides and creates cooler combustion, it increases other types of, 
types of emissions as well. So, the delete. The delete includes removing the EGR valve and capping it off, as well as removing the related EGR tubing and then capping it off on the exhaust manifold, and then reprogramming the engine computer so the engine will run without it, without throwing trouble codes or a check engine light, or putting your engine into limp mode. Deleting the EGR system will allow small increases in gas mileage and power and reduce soot contamination and the induction parts of the engine as well as reducing the amount of abrasive soot in the oil. So I want to talk a second about the DOC. Now, you don't see one in my diagram here anywhere. Uh, it can, it's another emissions control device that can be used to complement some of these other systems or replace them depending on the system. Uh, so you may have heard of it. I'm just going to mention it briefly. It, uh, can, can be, it stands for a diesel oxidation catalyst. It's like a catalytic converter and it can convert emissions like hydrocarbons, nitric oxides, particulate matter, and carbon monoxide into safer substances by passing them over a catalyst uh, and combining it with oxygen. And this can be done with relatively little downside to the engine. And here are some formulas to show that uh, hydrocarbons combined with oxygen and carbon monoxide combined with oxygen create safer gases like carbon dioxide and water. Apparently that is important because plants can absorb carbon dioxide better than carbon monoxide. Uh -huh. okay. All right, now let's go on to the diesel particulate filter, the DPF. In your 2008 model year engines, the EPA required diesel engines to address the DPM or diesel particulate matter, uh, or soot, which is partially burned diesel fuel, that's coming out the tailpipe. The DPF is also run by the engine computer, catches soot particles in a fine screen. When buildup occurs, the engine computer will put the DPF in region mode, or re regeneration mode. This includes injecting fuel into the exhaust to heat up the DPF to over 1100 degrees in order to burn off the particulate matter into ash. That's hot. That means fuel is used to make heat only and doesn't go towards engine power. The DPF is where your gas mileage really takes a hit. So in region mode, uh, along with the fuel injection, the engine computer also increases the engine idle in order to heat up the DPF. This is not noticeable when going down the highway, uh, but during stop and go and around town driving, it can prematurely uh, end the cycle before completion if you step on the gas or step on the brake. If this happens too often, the DPF can plug, causing significant back pressure, resulting in even lower engine performance, economy, and likely costly repairs to either clean or replace the DPF. In most diesels, fuel is injected into the downpipe uh, before the DPF to heat it up. On some diesels, however, the fuel is and or was directed uh, and injected directly into the engine itself after the power stroke and then pushed into the exhaust and the DPF. Unfortunately, some of the raw fuel while in the cylinder washes down and removes the protective oil coating on the cylinder wells and causing pre premature wear and then ends up in the oil. That's Too much raw fuel in the oil causes oil dilution, often resulting in catastrophic engine failure at the bearings because of lost lubrication. Because the DPF uses so much gas that doesn't go towards moving the vehicle forward, gas mileage can drop a stunning 30 to 50 percent. Now, I'm no scientist, but burning 50% uh, more fuel to reduce emissions doesn't really make sense. Physics says that if carbon molecules and fuel are going into the engine, they're going to come out. More fuel in, more emissions out. We can alter the types of molecules to an extent through uh, the combustion process and uh, catalytic converters that maybe change the part in number, uh, that may change the exhaust in the number of parts per million, but we are going to get 50% more million parts of emissions. Deleting the DPF. Deleting the DPF means removing the device, capping the electrical connectors of the SCR, for example, because you usually do them both at the same time, and installing a straight pipe in this place. The engine computer must then be reprogrammed to exclude the system and improve engine performance. Deleting the DPF SCR will result in a huge increase in gas mileage and a better running engine. Ironically, while it may not be fun or healthy to breathe in a black cab right behind a diesel, Soot is heavier than air and settles out quickly. It simply doesn't stick around long. Is it worth burning that much fuel for? You decide. The Selective Catalytic Reducer, or the SCR. Now remember, high combustion in the DPF can create nitric oxides. So in the 2013 model year, the EPA required treating downstream nitric oxides again, and the vehicle manufacturers implemented the SCR. 
SCR, or Selective Catalytic Reduction, addresses the nitric oxides by injecting DEF, or diesel exhaust fluid. Sounds silly, right? Like blinker fluid. Uh, but it's for real. That means you have to fill up the SCR reservoir um, when the light comes up on your dash, basically. It's a blue windshield washer colored fluid that you have to buy and pour into a little blue cap, uh, usually found inside where your fuel door is. If you run low, the engine warning light comes on. If you run out, the engine computer will put your truck in limp mode and you'll go nowhere fast until you put some back in. Also, very cold weather or simply age can crystallize the fluid um, and plug the injector lines or the injector itself. And contamination can also do the same and trigger limp mode. Remember, it's always a good idea to run your truck often and run into hot to avoid many engine problems. Your diesel engine was made to work, not to sit. And uh, we'll discuss that in another video as well. So here's how it works. The engine computer determines how much DEF to inject into the SCR. DEF is essentially ammonia or urea, uh, like cow pee. I'm not kidding. The chemical formula looks something like this. NH4 uh, plus nitric oxides and it out the tailpipe comes instead um, nitrogen and water, which is healthy to breathe. That's part of our normal air. Downsides, if the DPF fails, it can pass on uh, water and soot from the engine in a sludgy uh, compound and plug up the SCR. A bad SCR may require the replacement and repair of the DPF uh, as well, or it may quickly plug again. Deleting the SCR uh, means removing the device, the injector, capping the electrical connectors, and installing a straight exhaust pipe in its place. The engine computer must then be reprogrammed to exclude the system and improve engine performance. Most kits will include parts of deleting the DPF at the same time that straight pipe will cover both of these systems. As it turns out, the SCR doesn't consume all the ammonia or NH4 injected into it, and California ha has discovered that it may come out the tailpipe in such large amounts that plants are dying along inside the freeway. And guess what you're breathing if you're following a diesel then? You won't see the, the black cloud, and instead you'll be getting that ammonia. And so, how good does that delete sound now? But good luck with that in California. You know, it seems too often that with government fixes, uh, the solution is worse than the problem. <laughs> Truck Trend says this. So, there you have it. While some emission controls are low cost and helpful, most come at an extreme cost to you and your engine. If you can or don't want to do a delete for warranty or other reasons, the best protection for your vehicle is smart maintenance. This includes a good bypass filter and doing oil analysis once or twice a year. We'd like to see what your comments are and what you think about emissions controls and deletes. Whew! Talking about that stuff is exhausting. I think I'll have some diesel exhaust fluid. Just kidding. It's Gatorade. Don't drink diesel exhaust fluid. <laughs>